Right, guys, so always, Rudo Gutierrez, El Duncan, great to have you here in the Death Star. I hope you're all wearing your <laughs> gold Monday Night Football jacket. Bye. The 2-0 Las Vegas Raiders, Derek Carr outplaying Drew Brees. Vegas 34, New Orleans 24. Start with what you're seeing from the silver and black. How <laughs> real is this team, this version of Derek Carr? They rolled New Orleans in the second half, right, guys? So around the horn to you. Well, I do think they're a playoff team. You mentioned 2-0. They've only done that four times in the last 25 years. I thought Derek mm -hmm. Carr was outstanding. They went from down 10 nothing to up 24-17, four straight scoring drives. And they fit so perfectly in Las Vegas. I feel badly for the fans of Oakland. The Raiders left. The Warriors went to San Francisco. <laughs> but there's something about the Raiders playing there with the eternal flame. JFK is an eternal flame. Elvis and Al Davis. How about that? <laughs> Even though it's an electronic one. You think they're a playoff team? You said that. 2-0 and and with the expanded playoffs this year, you're seeing a playoff team on the field for Las Vegas. Yeah, I definitely am. And I think John Gruden has done a really good job. They took so much criticism for the Khalil Mack trade, but things in this you know, third year are starting to turn around for them. Mm -hmm. Israel Gutierrez, bring you in here. Are you with Frank? You believe this Vegas team is a playoff team? I think they are if Derek Carr is playing like this, and I think he can continue to play like this. It was a great story in the Bleacher Report, <clears throat> excuse me, Bleacher Report by Brent Sebleski, where he said he basically pointed all this out. It isn't just that they brought in Marcus Mariota as a backup, mm -hmm. or that they considered reportedly Tom Brady during the offseason, or that they looked at Kyle Murray last year before the draft. Derek Carr just said, I'm tired of being disrespected. And he's showing you right now that he can improve and he will improve uh, with his weapons still developing when Henry Ruggs is healthy and able to, to look like he did in week one a little bit more. And, you know, you look at the way he did it. Yes, Darren Waller was great, but he threw it to 11 different receivers in this game. And, again, this opponent, the, Derek Carr has been terrible against playoff teams yeah. in his career. is a second-worst record behind his brother since 2001. And now here he is yeah. with what is essentially a signature win for the Raiders. Well, huge for him and huge for for his momentum. We'll see if New Orleans is a playoff team this season. Now, El Duncan, <laughs> how for real are these Raiders? Yeah, but that's what's so confounding, Izzy. Like, you mentioned it, if he can do this consistently. He did it consistently last year. A lot of people sort of overlooked what an efficient year it was for Derek Carr. Yeah. He was one of two quarterbacks in NFL history to throw for 4,000 yards, right, and complete at least 70% of his passes and only mm -hmm. throw 10 or less interceptions. The other person to do it was Drew Brees, and he did it then with a motley crew. They actually upgraded his position. They went all in by getting Ruggs and Edwards. Josh Jacobs is, is particularly coming on for them in the backfield. And then, of course, Waller, who – was a wonder waller yesterday, if you will. So if they can continue that, <laughs> absolutely. The problem is, in terms of contending in the division, he always consistently has his worst games against the Chiefs. So do I see maybe a wild card team in the making? Absolutely. Yeah. If, of course, that defense can hold up. Can you talk a little bit more about that marriage, that relationship between Gruden and Carr? What do you think switched with Carr? You're saying last season, but even last night. L well, I mean, I think, yeah, I think Izzy sort of hit on it, the disrespect. Like, I, I mentioned all of those numbers that he put up, and what do the Raiders do? They still go and pay Marcus Mariota almost $18 million to come and be a backup. So they were basically telling Derek Carr from the beginning, you are, in fact, a marked man. And I think he has finally figured out, like, it is make it or break it for him. He was very efficient last year. We'll see if he can hold that up this year. But so far through two games, the Raiders fans, the Las Vegas Raiders fans, have to feel really good about what you're yeah, saying. Exactly. Okay. L, did you not know I was uh, tossing to you there? Today is going to be the day. I'm going to throw it back to you. The Wonder Wall. That's what that was. Nobody? All right, fine. <laughs> yeah, let's talk. Oh, I see. Like, oh, no. Yes. Oh, stay with me. Yeah. Yeah, Watch me for the changes. Eventually. All right? Drew Brees. Everybody wants to be the first person to pile on the old guy. I'm going to see if you guys are going to be after the first person because we had enough of it last night. But look at the Mina Kimes tweet here. All right? Whispers. All right. So, Breeze laughed off talk of decline after the game. Said his job is to execute the Saints' offense, not rack up air yards. L, I want to ask you this. How much of last night's struggle, and even last week, was Breeze not having the most productive wide receiver in NFL history, Michael Thomas? And how much yep. is concerning? I mean, there is.
is some level of concern. I mentioned the Raiders defense. They were one of the absolute worst, if not the worst, pass defense all of yeah. last year. So to think yeah. maybe they've had this huge coming about in two games, I don't really know. Um, but I will say this. I don't think you can overlook the fact that he didn't have his binky and Michael Thomas. His offensive line that has three pro bowlers didn't sustain their blocks particularly well. And more importantly, I was very concerned with what I saw from their balance. I mean, the running game was on fire in the first half. 15 mm -hmm. carries. They were averaging mm -hmm. over six yards per carry. And for some reason, they just completely abandoned the run in the second half. They ran the ball four times after that. We all know Drew Brees is now a game manager type. I wouldn't necessarily be concerned mm. just yet, but the idea that he couldn't even pass the ball on the Raiders pass defense should probably be a bit troublesome. Was everybody of the opinion he was simply and solely a game manager now, Israel Gutierrez? Is that what you saw from Brees last night? Is, or is it time to think maybe he is he, he's falling off? I can definitely see that being his new role, his new title, if you will, because he's not threatening deep. And that's been a trend for yep. the last couple of years, and he's still found a way to keep that percentage up around 74%. But defenses are eventually going to adjust when they realize that that is not a fear. And I thought that was an interesting quote from Sean Payton where he said, it's going to be an interesting film session for a lot of our star players as well. And I mm -hmm. wonder if Drew Brees mm -hmm. is in that mix. You know, you look at the things that Derek Carr did, Two of the things, and again, this was in that Bleacher Report article that he was really good at was A, against the blitz, but B, throwing out routes, right? Throwing toward the sidelines, something that Drew Brees is not very good at because of that arm strength. So you take away the outside, you take away the deep ball, all that defense is just going to be right around the middle. And even with Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara, it's going to be congested in there. So they're going to have to figure something out. Mm -hmm. And now, Frank Isola, how much of this last night, last week as well, was Michael Thomas not being healthy? And how much of it is the end, maybe, for Drew Brees? <laughs> I feel like we're ready to cancel Drew Brees yet again. Cancel, no concern, <laughs> absolutely. I would, I would be a little bit worried. You know, it's interesting. They have a stat now for everything, and there's one that said that he's thrown the ball for the first two weeks in the air, 4.8 yards. Right. That's the lowest since Drew Brees, I'm sorry, since Brett Favre almost 12, you know, 13 years ago. And Tom Brady's been like this, too where they get back in the pocket and they kill the plays early. What does that tell me? When you get up there in age, the arm strength isn't there. You also don't want to get hit as much. And I think they knew this last year. Teddy, remember, Teddy Bridgewater won five games for mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when, why they went out and got insurance for that position in case he gets hurt, unless they have to make a change. I still believe he gives them the best chance to win. But I'll tell you what, week five or six, if things aren't getting better, because he didn't play that great in the opening week uh, victory that they had against Tampa Bay. So things could change. So you believe he still gives them the best chance to win now, though. Israel, would they potentially be better if Jameis Winston was the quarterback? Or if Ta you have to be obligated to mention Taysom Hill's name once a show, so that there's that right there as well. Right. <laughs> Well, look, I understand that Jameis Winston can throw the ball deep, but his accuracy has always been a problem. So yep. even if that okay. opens up the offense, does it turn into a couple of pick sixes every other week? You know, that's problem. <laughs> that's a problem right there. I'd rather have a game manager like Drew Brees who can uh, eventually or every once in a while throw it deep, even if it's just a Al test. Duncan, deep. are the Saints going to be better with Drew Brees this year or Jameis Winston? They're going to be better with Drew Brees. We're talking about this because people just love going ahead and digging the grave of a future Hall of Fame quarterback, which is why for no reason at all, Twitter dragged 2015 Peyton Manning into this thing. What did he have to do with last night? Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, an old uh, straggling <laughs> Peyton Manning that won a Super Bowl. I mean, I believe that's a good example right. if you're going to invoke Peyton Manning's name. All right, so nobody believes. Um, Jameis will be the one to save them. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll stick with Drew Brees there. We'll move on. Lakers Nuggets game three. How Denver responds to being so close to evening the series Sunday night. Still, <laughs> I, I can't not look at Mason Plumley letting Davis run to the spot and just pointing, pointing. Israel, this team came back from 3-1 twice, so they are historically among the most resilient teams in NBA history. How do you see that playing out for them tonight? Yeah, I, I think that they gained some momentum, some confidence, if you will, in that game two comeback. I mean, they were down 16 with eight minutes left in the third quarter. That is a lot of you know, a lot of points to make up in a short period of time. And where I think they gain the most confidence is the way Jokic took over the game. He's got to do this a little bit earlier and for longer stretches, obviously. You're asking a lot of your superstar, mm -hmm. but that's normal in the NBA, right? And you saw at the end of that game, not only with the post up, not only with the rebound and put back of the three-pointer and just favorite. big shots, he, he, can, he can take over games in different ways. He doesn't even have to be the one shooting all the time. So if he is forceful mm -hmm. from the start, I think the Nuggets have a good 
good chance of taking this game three. I thank you for saying that putback on uh, Murray's short three-pointer. You know, Anthony Davis' shot deserves Excellent. all, all the credit. <laughs> but I thought the most amazing shot of the last minute was that putback. I saw somebody. I wish I knew who yeah. it was. I want to give him credit. Uh, talk to water polo coaches about what <laughs> Jokic does there as he tips it in. Frank Isola, what yeah. do the Nuggets mm. need to do tonight? That yeah, that was uh, Scott Cassiola of the uh, New York Times. Well done. That. Thank so you. A really thank you. good story. And thank you, Scott. Ab about that. You know, we broke down the Anthony Davis shot so much, but can we at least give LeBron a little bit of credit? I mean, the guy's so great that he just stood there and he had two guys guarding him. <laughs> he could have been a traffic cop. Three guys, really. And they, were still yeah. guard, and they were still guarding him right there. Yeah. The Denver Nuggets have been resilient all year long. They're going to need Jokic and Jamal Murray to play at a high level. But I look at LeBron. He realizes he's six wins away from another title. Getting these series over early is important for him. Everything rides on tonight. If Denver has any chance, it has to happen. You have to rely on Jokic and Murray. Those are the two guys that have to carry it. Mm -hmm. L. Duncan? Uh, well, I'm going to drop another musical reference on you because Al Green, I feel like, asked decades ago, how do yeah. you mend a broken heart? And I don't know that the Nuggets actually have the yeah. exact answer yeah. to just yeah. that. It's not going to just be Murray and Jokic because Murray and Jokic were enough, right, to have them there at the end. LeBron yeah. didn't have a particularly good game. I don't expect that's going to happen for two nights in a row. Okay. Anthony Davis has been literally unstoppable. He has suddenly discovered a jump shot, like out of nowhere, and he's got a deep ball now, <laughs> and he can also hit it mid-range, and he has been an absolute monster and basically unguardable in the paint. So I just don't know that they've got a So does everybody have Los Angeles tonight, Frank? Israel, yes. do you have Los so, Angeles? I do. Lakers. I got the Nuggets. Tonight. Okay, you do. I'm going to go, go Nuggets. I'm going to go Nuggets. Well, no, no, you can't right. do that, Duncan. Right. Not after everything you just said. What, what, what is that? The intangibles. No, no, no. It's points the going down. Points going. You are, you are trying to walk the fence here. No, no. Points going down. But you know, Frank, you thought you said something that LeBron is six wins away from a championship here. So he's six wins away from you guys saying this was too easy a run for him that he didn't have to go through another. <laughs> oh, that's definitely gonna happen. Yes, it is. Oh, I think I know some people are gonna try 100%. to do that. All right, taking a break right here. Coming up in buy or sell, allow Deion Sanders to reintroduce himself. Up, and this got bizarre. Around the Two pieces of news of the day from college football. We'll get to Deion Sanders and Jackson State in a second. Notre Dame Wake Forest this Saturday postponed as Notre Dame had seven positive COVID tests among players. 13 players are in isolation right now. They're working to reschedule and the reschedule date they've settled on Next week, October 3rd, which would be within the ACC guidelines of 10 days of isolation. But it is the fourth ACC game missed because of COVID so far. We're in what, week three, is real Gutierrez? Buy or sell the state of college football with this news. I'm going to hang on to it. I'm going to hang on to a buy, and here's why. We've seen in other sports, MLS, and MLB, we've seen the COVID outbreaks early on, and they sort of powered through that and mm -hmm. found a way to continue their mm -hmm. season and be successful. Mm -hmm. I've always Boy. wondered why the in, – in, I've always thought the NCAA had the largest chance of having a major outbreak because you've got, you know, so many student athletes out there, and they are 18 to 22-year-olds. However, it's too soon to say it's not going to work out. Okay. Mm -hmm. El Duncan, your view of it? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still going to buy it. I'm, frankly, I thought we'd see more far sooner. I mean, Izzy mentioned it with MLB. It was opening week, and it couldn't have happened. Uh, they couldn't have had a worse start, rather, in MLB. Um, I will say this. The SEC starts this weekend. That's certainly something to keep an eye on. I do think people sort of glossed over the idea that Charlotte and UNC got canceled for the same exact reason last week because, well, it's Charlotte and UNC. There's going to be a lot more attention on this. This is a top-10 team. This is no game right. we're talking about. Right. And the question is, what's going to happen with South Florida? Because they face them so if they're doing contract tracing does that impact them as yeah. well Frank Isola you know we saw this in Europe with soccer when it mm. first came back and then you had uh, baseball these sports that aren't playing in a bubble there's a couple of yeah you get the uh, positive test you shut everything down but you kind of forge ahead that's what college football is trying to do these college campuses let's face it they're basically a human petri dish but as El mentioned <laughs> you know the people in the south they they're only concerned with one thing college football starts this weekend when the big boys play. Well, well, when this came out, the headline, and, and that Notre Dame called it, you know, I said, this is the process playing out the way it should, right? And the plan to reschedule. I'm like, this yeah. is great. They're, they're actually taking – and then I saw the next date, and the date was next week. And I'm like, wow, that's a quick turnaround. Because <laughs> in the Big Ten, ten days. I believe it's more than 10 days, right? Is it 21 days? I mean, it, it's two weeks, and we first heard 14 days. So, wow. 
move on. News of the week you were maybe prepared for, but maybe you weren't. And then the news you didn't know you needed today. I'm talking about Deion Sanders, new head coach at Jackson State. He introduced himself yesterday with a police escort, marching band, and Escalade. And after today, he reintroduced himself. It was reported his staff would include Terrell Owens, wide receivers coach, Warren Sapp, defensive line coach. Now, this was immediately debunked by Deion Sanders. Says it's not true. That everyone thought it could be true, I believe, says something. But Frank Isola, how do you view Sanders taking the Jackson State job? Well, Jackson State certainly won the press conference. That was some entrance that Dion made. Mm -hmm. Whether they could win football games, that's another story. They haven't had a winning season since 2013. I give Dion a lot of credit for trying this. How will he be on that Sunday, Monday morning following a loss and you have to go recruit? I think he's up for the job, but it's not easy rebuilding in college football. Oh, Duncan? Oh, man, Deion Sanders is a perfect fit because, as any black person will tell you, the fall is HBCU. It's all about the pomp and circumstance. I'd be willing to bet more people can name <laughs> members of the sonic boom of the South marching band for Jackson State than they can actual football players <laughs> to play for Jackson State. He has literally no bar. Like, he can come in and do whatever. He'll maybe be able to poach a couple of people to come to HBCUs mm -hmm. based on the current climate. Mississippi is ripe with young black talent that gets poached by the SEC. I'm, I'm glad you bring that up. On I'm glad because we had that conversation in the last three months, right, about um, would HBCUs benefit? We saw it in basketball, how we're getting mocker. But, but do you believe that's in play here? And remember, Walter Payton went to Jackson State. Let's just say that real quick, L. Duncan. Do you believe that's in play here, that Dion can be part of that revolution among recruits? No, mm -hmm. no, no. I think he'll maybe get more on campus, but like when they go and they look at these other SEC yeah. facilities, they Try just can't it. compete the on facilities. top of the fact they can't compete with the fact that they won't be able to go for a national championship either. So no, I don't think TV. I know this is a, well, this is a fun story. Deion Sanders is fun. The marching band and everything is great. There are some real questions about his time at prime prep and what happened to all the, the athletes and the students there. And I'll bring in Israel Gutierrez now on, on Dion at Jackson State. Just the last thing I wanted to say here, I'm glad that the Owens and Sapp thing was basically debunked by, D by Dion because, you know, it's al he's already a superstar. He has to really focus on this job. <laughs> he has to be committed yeah. to the job. And when you're just bringing in other names, potentially, maybe it seems like you're not taking it as seriously. So I'm actually glad that that's not the case. I just, I just hope and I wonder how many questions were asked about what really went down with prime prep and where that left students and athletes after that. We'll move on. Buy or sell three. How the lightning struck out. Even lightning strikes. Thank you, Reality. How the lightning struck to even up the Stanley Cup Finals with Dallas. Three goals in four minutes. Final Tampa three, Dallas two. L, does that make you think Tampa figured something out or that Dallas just had a four-minute ice fart and still in control of the series? <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be all lightning because the idea that the, that the Dallas Stars, all of a sudden their penalties are killing them. Quite literally, they're catching mm -hmm. up to them and they can't kill any of them. Plus, the lightning are going to get Stamkos back, who's fantastic with the man advantage. I think this is lightning all the way. Frank Isola? The Lightning have been the best team in the bubble. They proved it again. They're 6-0 and following a loss. The early goals, just like they did against the Islanders. Tony, their power play was 0 for 14. They were 2 for 4 last night. Right. <laughs> Israel Gutierrez? Just let me go third on this, and I'll just give you the exact same information that Frank and El just did. They oh, seem to have Israel. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. They seem to have figured out their power play, and Stamkos is, at, it yeah. seems like a sure thing. He was there skating around for game two, so it yeah. feels yeah. like the Lightning are going to take this one. Mm -hmm. I think Frank's trying to make good on a pick he had of Tampa winning it all last year when I think we recall <laughs> they went out in four straight games of the first round. But that's motivating this team right now. I mean, I, you could definitely feel that. L. Duncan, ah, uh, just maybe, maybe I was going to be the one to save you, save you. But no, that's not the case. You're still my wonder <laughs> I get it now. I get it now. Okay, good. Israel Gutierrez, Frank Isola. Israel Gutierrez, Frank Isola. Good luck in showdown. Michael Jordan. NASCAR ownership. <laughs> He's teaming up with Denny Hamlin and the driver, Bubba Wallace. I know I talked to you guys before we sat down. You both thought this was significant. In what way is it significant, Israel Gutierrez? Well, just bringing in diverse fans, which NASCAR has had a difficult time doing. And it's not just Michael Jordan, one of the most recognizable black men in the world, but Bubba Wallace, the two of them together. Bubba has made a name for himself. As he starts winning races, it's going to be a lot to look at. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn-born Michael Jordan, but he grew up in North Carolina. He grew up loving the sport. It's a win-win all the way around for NASCAR. You put that Jumpman logo on the car, 
Good for everybody. That's the idea. I was about to, I'll take a point away from you for saying Brooklyn born Michael Jordan, but I'm going to give you a point and another point back and Israel point. Me and him. You put the Jumpman logo on the car. We got something here, right? I mean, come on now. How many, how many memorabilia cars can you sell? It's great. Showdown two. A warning from Bryson DeChambeau. I'll tinker even more with the game and put it on even more weight. He says he thinks he can gain 15 more pounds to get up to 245 and get even larger for the Masters so he can hit it even longer. Should DeChambeau continue to tinker here or should he stop? Not that he's won, Frank. Absolutely he should do it. Plus, some of the golfers are whining. He's changing the game, just like Tiger Woods changed the game 25 years ago. Nothing wrong with mm -hmm. that. I worry about him putting on too much weight too fast, maybe messing with a little bit of flexibility or whatnot. But if he's on board with it, I say go for it. I want to see him hit it 360. Mr. Fitness himself. Hobie. You've said this every Dang. single time his name has come up. You love Bryson DeChambeau. When you had a chance to pick the winner of the U.S. Open, who did you pick, Israel? Not John Rahm. <laughs> Point. I stole him. Take the FaceTime. Wow. All right. Meanwhile, I'm watching Monday Night Football, and the Raiders play in that beautiful stadium, and they're 2-0. and And down the street here, the Jets and Giants play in a dump. But forget about the Giants. <laughs> it's really about the Jets, who in their two games have been outscored 58-30. to Nobody watched the game on Sunday. Their rating was 3.9. And Adam Gage... Is seven and eleven. <laughs> a big gulp on this one, Tony. They've been, they've lost nine of those games by, by double, double figures. Teams. Yeah. Adam Gates, you got to get better. All right, Israel, you didn't see that one coming, did you? You made the pick. No. Got to live by the pick. Mm. We're done. See you tomorrow. <laughs>